A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Once more with Taylor. And he'll get about four across the 30 to the 32. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Third down, Rivers. That's complete to Jonathan Taylor out of the backfield. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. The offense staying out there. They look prepared to go here on fourth and 10. Back now in Atlanta. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Desperation time. Rivers on fourth down. He's going to have his running back. It's complete. And getting this just shy of midfield. They'll spot it at the 49. Fourth down, no problem. 19 yards that time. But now it's first and 10. two plays. We'll definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. First down, it's Taylor. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Again, it's Taylor. And he'll go down at the 28. Four yards the pick up, first down. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. First down, it's Hines. 
It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Well, I think after that run, the defense is getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get your reset. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down to the wire. jump back in front Rodrigo if there was a time to break off a nice run like that it was right here to grab the lead in the fourth and it's just so much stress on a defense in that situation because you're looking at the clock what are we guarding against what's the first thing right the strike to the end zone throwing the ball instead they come back and hit him with a run block it well and how about the physical run he made terrific job finding his way to the end zone to give him the lead and this will make it into the end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. 25-yard line. set to begin their next drive the Falcons offense at the line and following the interception just any interception are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or maybe just throw that at one I think you are I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go ah totally didn't affect me let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again you're going to take care of it but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all still want to attack we'll see how they attack him here He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Sometimes it's hard to figure, but you can live with incompletions in this situation. You can't live with these short gains that take time off the clock. You know who loves it, this defense. The last catch did get three, but they're still left needing seven yards on third down. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 10 yards there and a first down for the Falcons. Obviously a big first down right there. Yeah, they still got to hustle. They got to get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. But I don't think necessarily you need to spike it, but they've got to continue to move quickly. Stepping up, he'll try and run. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. Ten at the 50-yard line. From midfield now, here's Ryan. Caught on the right side by Jones. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. First down. First and 10 at the 37-yard line. Here's Ryan. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Jones. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Consecutive catches for him. That good for 11. First and 10 at the 26-yard line.
it's a never say never situation. But to me, that looks like that's the one that's going to finish them off. The score that puts them in front here late, but not. You got to rally your kick team, don't you? And say the last thing we need is a big return. And what happens is guys get over eager, get out of their lane because they're so excited they want to make the last tackle. <laughs> you mess up, could come back at you a long way. Way cool to kick off for Atlanta. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. A fairly short kick from the 14. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. At their own 32-yard line. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. They only need a field goal. Obviously, the clock a huge factor. They'll be watching that. What do they need to do here, Charles? Your sequence of plays has to get you out of bounds. Completions, get out of bounds, gain some yardage. Then when the clock hits seven seconds or left, now you've got a decision. Are you in field goal range, or is it Hail Mary time? Because from seven seconds down, you don't want to take a shot that you're going to have another play. We'll see how they handle it. The pass underneath, here's Hines with it. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds remaining. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds showing on the clock. So the big play has them all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. Now Rivers. Campbell making the catch. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. with a touchdown and that's what they're gunning for on first and goal sidelines the Atlanta offense out there for their next drive and they've got this one in hand no timeouts remaining defensively so this one should just be one kneel and then handshakes he finds some way to turn this into positive yardage as he struggles forward for a pickup of about two 
So time runs out. It's a victory for the Atlanta Falcons. And it wasn't really always pretty. They had their bumps and bruises. Really, both sides did. But they did what they needed to do at home to get